that kind of a tip over can be very expensive to fix on the new R1300 GS. Watch this video till the end to know why. I'm going to explain. So, in this video, let's talk about the comparisons between the 1250 and the 1300. Now, I'm not going to really go through too many of the specs. All that I'm going to tell you is that the 1300 is more powerful than the 1250. It's higher on cubic capacity as the name suggests and it's going to be lighter as well. How much lighter will all depend on how you customize the motorcycle because the way it has been designed, they want you to customize the motorcycle, not just ride it out of the showroom as is, right? So the weight differences will really depend on what you choose. Okay, so I'm going to keep intervening in this video every now and then to add some extra information which wasn't available to me when I was recording the difference between the two motorcycles, which got available to me later. So I'm going to keep butting in and adding that additional footage. So like I said, this is going to be a very long video. Watch it till the end. There are quite a few details which you'll probably not find in the brochure. They're very interesting details. So watch it till the end. So let's begin with the design, like we saw with the S1000RR, even with the new GS, that asymmetrical design is gone. What you get is this single projector beam lamp, characterized by these daytime running lights on the side, which create the effect of an X. So while you had that X and a horseshoe kind of a design on the outgoing 1250, the 1300 gives you this X-shaped design. The controversial headlight is actually matrix tech it's got the matrix led tech we've seen that on many luxury cars so even within this little projector lamp there are multiple leds i think 46 leds that can not only act as the low beam and the high beam but also cornering function so every time you're turning it's going to light up a few of the leds in the corners to give you that cornering function and no i'm talking about this not these lights these are drls they don't have any other function now, even in terms of the windscreens, of course, there are going to be multiple options, even for the windscreen, three options. The windscreens also take a very different approach in terms of the design. You have that single piece element on the 1250. You have a single big windscreen and then you have these deflectors on the side for better protection against the weather, against the elements. Here, you see a much larger primary windscreen and then you see these deflectors two piece deflectors on each side that you see one done up in this matte shade let me in fact use a little bit of my shadow so that you'll probably get a better view and one that is transparent what you will also notice is that the front end looks a lot sleeker on the 1300 compared to the 1250 now this one obviously is not with the additional nose guard or anything i don't even know if they are making that for the 1300 yet but here you will see that additional black portion right on the nose that is removable that's an additional extra so to say now in terms of the mud flaps also there is quite a bit of a difference you can see that the mud flap on the 1250 extends all the way down almost close to the the axle whereas here it ends a little shorter now even in terms of the brakes you can see the bmw badging the calipers being slightly different while the wheels on this motorcycle may look similar to the ones on the R1250 GS, the ones on the 1300 are about 900 grams lighter and even the design of the edge here is slightly different. Also, it's strengthened to make it more enduring to bad road conditions compared to what we had with the 1250. There were a lot of complaints about wheels bending very easily on the 1250. Hopefully, with the 1300, it should be a lot easier to live with. The placement of the radiators, more or less a similar placement, but I believe there is going to be change to the geometry of it. Even in terms of the suspension, they are calling it the telelever and para paralever Evo suspensions. So it's an evolution technically of the suspension that you had on the 1250. Most motorcycles use the forks to hold the wheels, to do the steering and to also take care of the front suspension duties. Whereas in the GS, the front suspension, damping duties, etc. are taken care of by this separate strut and spring. Now, with the 1300, they're calling it the paralever and the telelever Evo. So essentially what has happened is that little canister that you see right behind at the front 
and the canister that you have here, the gas canisters for the front and the rear suspension, they have an additional spring in them. So, when you engage the dynamic riding modes, essentially those springs get activated and that gives you or mimics the effect of a progressive spring. So essentially, it is now able to give you a much tauter or a much stiffer suspension setup compared to something like the R1250 GS. Since we are talking about the suspension, so the mounting points are different. The bearings that you had on these forks is going to be different compared to what you get on the 1300. So the overall mounting itself is very different. This unit is much chunkier and now it reduces the motion overall when you are riding. The forks on the 1300 are one millimeter thicker in diameter compared to the R1250. Sorry if I'm sounding a little breathless, but that's because I'm in Ladakh right now. You have this and then you use this to start the motorcycle. So this switch remains common, but the push button unlock is gone. You get that here now. So you'll have to press this switch to boot up the systems. The lock for the keyless ride resides here, right under the stem that holds the entire infotainment system. And then press this switch as always to start the motorcycle. The mode switch still remains where it was. So that is going to let you cycle through the various riding modes. There you see that mode switch here as well. But here you had the heated grips. You do not get that on this motorcycle right now. When I say you do not get that, I talk, I'm talking about the switch. Similarly for the lights, you will see that the switch is going to be missing there. And also notice this switch where you could change the ride height and uh, the, the suspension behavior essentially. Right. So here if you see these buttons or these switches have been replaced by something new. So when I press this, it's essentially going to launch this particular menu. And in the menu is where I'm going to get the heated grips. Then I'm also going to get the windscreen, which I'm going to come to in a bit. Then I'm going to be able to change the, I have to first go into the DTC menu and then I can make changes, right? So I have to press and hold this to turn it off. So I've turned it off now. So within DTC, I have to go into a menu again. Similarly, in damping, again, I have to press OK, go into the damping sub menu and then using these up and down arrows, change it to whatever I need. So it's on dynamic, road. So these are the two settings that I can switch between. OK, so now you can see a sub menu has opened. Now, using these arrow keys again, I can increase the height or lower the height of the windscreen. But even apart from that, you'll see these additional holes. So even at its lowest setting, if you're not okay, if you want it even lower, then you can simply unbolt the windscreen and mount it at an even, low, even lower setting. So especially if you're going off-road, uh, you know, if you are at places like these, you've come to Ladakh where on the highway, you need that taller winds, uh, windscreen. But when you're riding off the road, even at its lowest position, it's not really uh, what you are expecting. Then you can just go even lower on that and that's going to be almost the same height as the enduro windshield that we had with the 1250. And for reference, on the 1250, you would have to do it manually using this particular mechanism. There you can see, going up and down. Now the screen is the same. You get a 6.5 inch screen on both. So what I'm going to show you instead here is the new screen that you get with this, which is the sport screen. So with that, you're going to, it's going to show you how much traction control intervention or DTC intervention, DTC is dynamic traction control, how much intervention you're getting from the DTC. So that essentially tells you how good you are with the throttle. And then it's also going to tell you the brakes, how good or bad you are with the brakes. And for all you sport riders out there, it's also going to tell you what your maximum lean angles to the right and the left are going to look like the additional bit that you get on the screen. Otherwise, most of it remains the same. Navigation, media, telephone. This will only be active once you have your headset and your phone connected. And of course, the BMW connected ride app connected to this particular screen. Now, when I go into the settings, there is a new one, which is assist. So here you're going to get 
the suspension damping configuration. Like you saw, using the hotkeys, we were able to cycle between road and dynamic, right? But the suspension behavior of how it should be in road and dynamic is something that you're going to control here. So you get five levels, two, one, zero, minus one and minus two. So you get five levels and you can preset it to your liking. And once you do, let's leave it at one for now. Once you do, then using the hotkeys, you can simply just go to road or dynamic and it will load those presets that you've set here. Similarly, go into cruise control and you see the adaptive cruise control. So right now it's set to comfort and dynamic. Now it remains to be seen if they bring the radar tech to India or not. So this here is just a blank plastic panel because the radar unit is only available on the Tramontana, the top of the line variant out of the five variants that will be sold in India. That's the one with the option 719 part. So you can't really spec any of the other variants like the Trophy or the Triple Black, etc. with the radar, which I think is a bit of a missed opportunity. Uh, they should allow you to customize, maybe get the Trophy with the radar uh, or maybe get the Triple Black with the radar. Uh, because a lot of people will want to tour with the triple black variant and the radar tech might just come in handy as a good safety feature to have even in our conditions. Let me know what are your thoughts and if you wouldn't get the bike with the radar, what would you do with this plastic panel? What you also get is Hill Start Control Pro. So essentially it's going to use uh, using just the front brake, you, it will also engage the rear brake when you are at an angle, right? So if uh, you're at a gradient on a slope, for example, so just keeping the front brake pressed for a little bit, it's also going to use the rear brake and then hold the motorcycle at that angle uh, for a few seconds and then you can just clutch and launch the motorcycle. It's not going to roll back for a few seconds. So that's a nifty uh, piece of kit to have that you also have on the 1250. One more thing that you're going to notice here is the shift light. So there is going to be a light over here now that will tell you when to shift. It's going to flash every time you're closer to the red line to tell you this is where you have to shift and you can even configure it. You can, right now it's configured at 5,000 RPM and it's set between 5 to 9,500 RPM. Brightness is 100%, frequency is 4 Hertz. So that is how quickly it is going to flash to tell you to shift to the next gear. So let's continue with the rest of it. The battery for the 1300 is right under the seat. The seat can't come off easily because there is a cable attached to it for this, the heated seat mechanism. And this is where the battery is. Now, if you want to replace the battery, you have to first remove this particular panel, get rid of a few cable ties and then access the battery. A lot, a lot inconvenient compared to the 1250GS. Because on the 1250, the battery is right behind this little panel. So all you need to do is unscrew this, pull out the battery a little bit, remove the first terminal, then pull it out further, remove the, the negative terminal and then get the battery out. So it's much easier on the 1250 in my opinion. Now you will also see a difference to the seats. This seat, visually at least, looks a little narrower to me compared to the comfort seats or the touring seats that you have here on the 1250. Similarly, the rear seat also looks wider here. This one seems a little narrower to me. In terms of the grab rail, Again, the design is changed, is different, but mounting your top boxes, mounting those plates for your top boxes, luggage systems, etc., shouldn't be too difficult. However, this one is clearly not as detailed as this one. And you also have these pannier mounts right here, which you will see here as well. The pannier mounts have changed. So they have a new set of Vario panniers now that are available for this motorcycle. And of course, there are, there'll be a host of other uh, accessories other luggage options that the aftermarket will present for this motorcycle or have already started doing that. Now in terms of the lighting, well, no tail light either. In the sense, you don't get this big cluster that you get on the 1250. Like we've seen in the past as well, we've seen with the S1000R as well, these blinkers also double up as the tail lights, which is what you see here as well. They're flashing right now because the phone's camera frequency isn't really matching, but yeah, it's not really flashing with the bike. Now, even for the shaft, it is pretty much the same, pretty much. That's the shaft of the 1250. And just notice the size of the boot. You have this little rubber panel, right? So that's the boot. And the boot is going to be 
differently designed and bigger on this motorcycle. So they've also managed to plonk in a longer swing arm on the 1300 compared to to the 1250. Now visually if you were to see it actually feels like the 1250 is the one with the longer swing arm but in reality is the 1300 that has the longer swing arm. So the swing arm is longer but the wheelbase remains the same it's identical to the R1250 GS. They have however strengthened the shaft. The shaft that sits inside is now stronger than the R1250's shaft and it is recommended to replace it at 80,000 kilometers versus 60,000 kilometers of the R1250. The chassis stamping for the 1300 is in a more convenient, more easy to read place. The chassis printing on the 1250 on the other hand is, well, pretty cumbersome to get a look at right in there. Even your foot peg assembly is going to look very different. This is the 1300. That's the front, that's the rider and that's the pillion and this is how it looks on the 1250. So the pegs are also obviously different but again like I said don't go by these because there are going to be a host of accessories that are going to be available so you can also get wider pegs if you like. Now the other big change is the side stand. Just look at the angle of the side stand. It's more upright on the 1250 compared to the 1300 where it drops a lot more. Now in terms of the engine, like I said, you already have the specs with you. I'm not going to repeat them. But if we talk about where the boxer sits or where the cylinders are, they are slightly higher on the 1300. Of course, they are parked at an angle right now, but they are sitting slightly higher on the 1300 compared to the 1250. So what that means is one, you can't really port any protection parts like this engine protection that you see on the 1250 to the 1300 straight up because the mounting points are also going to be different. Furthermore, the cylinders also sit more in line with each other on the 1300 and the right cylinder doesn't extend further back towards the rider as much as it does on the 1250, thus liberating more room, making it feel more comfortable compared to the 1250. And the second thing is, the gearbox is now underneath. It's on the lower part of the engine. That is how they liberated more room for that longer swing arm. Whereas here, you can see the size of the entire engine. It doesn't look as tall as you see on the 1300. The other thing that deserves a mention is the cylinder head covers. In case you have a fall and you do not have this kind of an engine protection accessory, if you have a minor fall, if there are minor scratches on it, it's easy to fix with a simple paint. You don't really have to replace the cylinder head cover. With the 1300, however, if you do have a fall like this, this plastic part, easy to replace. This is the guard, easy to replace. But here, you'll also have to replace the cylinder head, or at least the cover, because matching this finish is not going to be easy. It's not a simple paint thing. It's a very different kind of a powder coating. So this is something that you will not be able to fix very easily. A replacement would be the better option and unfortunately the more expensive option. Then the tubular frame, the frame that you see here and the tubular subframe that is gone out of the window too. You get this completely new unit. The subframe is still a bolt-on frame but it's a completely new unit. The 1300 also sits slightly taller but to reiterate you are going to be getting a host of accessories you will be able to specify if you want a lower seat option or a low ride height option etc etc depending on the variants that you're choosing now let's also talk about the knuckle guards you get these integrated turn blinkers which is why you don't see the turn blinkers the kind of turn blinkers that you get with the 1250 you don't see any of that here which is what I think makes it also look a little bit more leaner than this. Of course, the absolute width is much lesser on the nose on the 1300 compared to the 1250. But one of the other things contributing to that is that the turn blinkers have gone here. One of the most common accessories that you will see on adventure motorcycles are bark buster hand guards. They come with a metal frame, a metal brace inside. So in case you have a tip over, it protects your palm, it protects the lever as well. 
However, in the case of the new 1300 with the integrated turn blinker, things get a bit difficult if the bike has a fall. One, the turn blinker breaks very easily. Two, this is plastic, so this breaks very easily too, which means it can hurt your hand, it can break the lever inside. And if you were to replace this with bark busters, you don't have turn blinkers. So then you have to go with aftermarket turn blinkers as well, which may not be a very reliable idea. So this, I think, is a bit of a missed opportunity. More form over function. They should have added a metal brace instead. That would have been perfect. You also get this additional panel. It's a two-piece system. Something like what we've seen with the bark busters. And if you look at the triple black color, then of course you're going to get different color options right from the knuckle guards to the side panels to everything. Now talking of the side panels, let's also take a look at the side panels here. So you still get that satin finish, but in a very different avatar. If you look at the 1250, it's much chunkier and it also doesn't seem as pointy as this one. So it's all to probably make the 1300 look more sporty compared to the 1250 is what I believe. So it's all a nice visual gamble. How does it pay off? You let me know in the comments below. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Let me know. Now, in terms of the side panels as well, the tank section is going to look a lot smaller because of the way they have designed everything here. The tank is going to look a lot larger, a lot chunkier. You have this primary tank area and then that panel on top and the nose flowing right into it. Here, the nose, these panels, they all seem like one seamless unit. And then you get this panel separately and it's soft touch material like what you get on some of the premium cars, right, on the dashboard. It's in fact softer than that. So even this should give you a little bit more traction when you're standing and riding, riding off-road, etc. And in fact, this, this texture matches the texture of the seats, which is what get gets you that dual tone combo as well. But you see that there is multiple layering to the side, which is what creates a further effect of the motorcycle looking a lot leaner than this particular bike. But you tell me, is it looking leaner to you? Do you like the new design? Again, use the comment section to tell me just that. Now, let's move to the levers here. The adjustability for the levers, right? You have this round dial that you see on top, right? So you just push and then just adjust the levers. So this is how you do it on the 1250. Whereas on the 1300, it's going to be slightly different. I hope the camera is picking that. You can see this little lever right here. So same thing, you're going to push the lever forward and then you're going to make adjustments the way you want, right, to the lever. So the mechanism is very different on this. You don't get that dial mechanism on the 1300. Now, in terms of the mirrors, they're absolutely similar. In terms of the master cylinder, in terms of the shape of the master cylinder as well, let's take a look at it from the top. It is different on the 1300 versus the 1250, slightly different lesser details as well. Now, another thing that you will notice, we were talking about the screen, right? So when you look at it from where the rider sits, the screen on the 1250 has a lot of paraphernalia around it. Whereas when you look at it from where the rider sits on the 1300, it's not, it doesn't look as wholesome, as cluttered. Some of you may like it, some of you may not. Again, let me know in the comments if you like it or not. The screen has a more floating effect to it in that sense. You still get this panel on top. This is where your sat-nav, the BMW sat-nav is going to go. And then there are other aftermarket accessories that fit in place of that. What are your thoughts here? Yeah, the navigation is not really integrated as in you don't get like a full screen navigation like you would with a Google Maps or something or with Apple CarPlay. So is that a missed opportunity? Let me know in the comments below. Now, this is the handlebar. You get GS branding even on the handlebar and then for off-road riders, you can also change the angle of the handlebar and you have reference points here to tell you how much of it is changed. Moving over to the 1250, that, those reference, reference points aren't available here on the 1250, right? What I can also notice immediately is of course the placement of the USB charger right here. But what you do get on the 1300 is this cubby hole for stowing away some items. And it's also got this rubber pad inside. Oh, and that is where the USB port was hiding. So you get this rubber pad so that your phone doesn't move around. And it's got a little tiny cut 
within that so that your cable can route right through and then you get this USB port. So you get a USB A port inside. So maybe your older cables are still going to continue functioning with this. But that also means if you have newer phones, you might need to buy USB A cables. Now, like the 1250, it's a changing diameter handlebar, which means that it's thicker at the center and slimmer on the sides. So you will need to then choose what kind of handlebar accessories you want, what kind of U mounts you want to use with this, right? So sometimes mounting it over here becomes a little tricky. You have to either go here or here, right? So that is still going to be the case. You'll have to do those kind of adjustments and plan exactly where you want to put your phone mount, etc., or any of the handlebar mounts. So the exhaust canister is a lot larger on the 1250. You would expect that with new age emission norms, it would go even larger on the 1300, but actually it isn't. It is, it is much stubbier. They have been able to, uh, you know, plonk in all that hardware quite nicely into that big expansion chamber, that shiny expansion chamber that you see there. That's again because they were able to integrate the gearbox differently in this particular motorcycle. They were again able to get more room to put more of the emissions curbing hardware underneath instead of how it is on the 1250. So that is going to be the other change. So I'm going to post a reel about how these two motorcycles sound and I would like you to make a choice on which one you like more. So do head over to my Instagram channel which is Rohit underscore Paradkar and let me know what are your thoughts on that front as well. Another tiny little addition to the 1300 is this little flap that you see on the wheel hugger. That little flap has been designed in order to reduce the spray that is being thrown up to the motorcycle. No such flap on the 1250 but honestly I've never really had a problem with any spray kicking up on this motorcycle either. One more change that you will notice is the oil window, right? The oil check window is right next to the header pipe here. So you've got to really sit down and to take a look. Whereas if you were to look here, the oil window is going to be on the side, much easier for you to take a look at. On the 1250, to fill oil, the cap needs a special tool. It is provided with the motorcycle, for example, the screwdriver. The handle for the screwdriver is shaped like this, so you can use that to open this particular cap. Whereas on the new 1300, a very simple mechanism. Just using your fingers, you can open it. Just that it's a little tight right now. This kick out lever, so you can just kick it out like that, and then you can press it down. The other thing that's going to happen is, it has the electronic suspension, right? So on certain variants, if you do opt for that feature, it's called the adjustable ride height feature. If you were to choose that feature, what it's essentially going to do is, the moment you turn off the motorcycle and the moment you pull that stand down, what's going to happen is the suspension is going to raise from the rear, raise from the front, so that pulling the bike on the stand, even with your luggage, is going to get easier. The other bit is, when you come to a standstill, say at a red light, or just slowing down for some traffic at an intersection, the bike is automatically going to reduce its height. So while the seat height is higher than the 1250, because the bike will reduce its height, hopefully it should be easier even for our average Indian height to get two feet flat on the ground. So 1300 key is bigger than the 1250 key, but it's going to have the same kind of functionality as well. So this is what the back of the key looks like. So this is going to be your difference in the two keys. So one thing that BMW is definitely going to have to change now is that big printed key that they have, which they use for the photographs when delivering new motorcycles, they'll probably have to change that. It will probably have to look like this now. You have this little protection pad on the tank. You don't need it here because like I told you, you have that textured panel right there. It's still going to be a keyless operation even for the fuel filler cap. And it's pretty much the same in terms of the fuel lid. The fuel lid is very similar, just that it doesn't say keyless anymore, but it is, it is going to be keyless. So yeah, this is, going to be the changes. If you've spotted any more changes or if you know of any other changes that I haven't mentioned here, let me know in the comments below. Like I said, the specs are on the internet for you to find out. So I'm not really going to get too much into the specs of, uh, you know, what these, uh, what these engines are like, the wheelbase, the uh, suspension travel and all of that. I'm not really going to get into that. So that you can definitely refer to. But I hope this was a good visual representation for you to understand the key differences between the two motorcycles. Right, so that's that.
Let me know in the comments which is the bike that you like more or what are the features that you like, what are the features that you wish they carried forward from the 1250 which they probably haven't or what are the features that you wish your 1250 had which the 1300 does and flaunts, right? So let me know all of this in the comments below. Like I said, I'm going to be riding this, these motorcycles very soon. So I'd be more than happy to know what your comments are on these bikes. And if you have any queries about the 1300, let me know in the comments. Those are something that I will answer in my review of the R1300GS, which will drop on youtube.com slash odmag real soon. Thank you so much for watching this one. Until the next one, take care and ride safe.